As the world of visual commerce starts to gain more and more and more traction, we're talking to leading global brands and they're telling us, hey, how do I put together a really good RFP? Today, I wanted to hit on eight things that you should think about including if you're writing a request for proposal for visual commerce or product configuration. So the first and most important thing you should think about is, hey, if we're doing this uh, big selection process and this vendor uh, evaluation, you really want to work with a vendor that has an actual platform, a platform that you can go into, add materials, add new products, change and create rules. And what I mean by that is you don't want one where you have to send an email and request for changes. Uh, things are getting written in a black box. Um, that will really restrict you as your organization grows and changes from having your product actually reflect visually what it really is. Um, second thing, you want to work with a vendor that's able to offer 3D, 2D, and augmented reality. I know that in the, you know, in the near term, you might think, hey, I only need to show my product in 3D or in virtual photography. Um, but I bet you as the world of uh, you know, changes and things in the future, you want to have that option to show it in 3D, 2D, and augmented reality, which of course you can do with 3Kit. Um, a third thing to think about is enterprise readiness. So, um, you know, for example, 3Kit is ISO 27001 certified. Um, is the vendor that you're going to work with, are they a team um, that has all the right security and IT infrastructure set up so that they'll be along, around for the long term? Number four, experience. Um, for example, 3Kit is founded by Ben Houston. Uh, he's one of the um, most prolific contributors to 3JS, which is the world's sort of foremost used 3D library. Um, so we know our very deep expertise in 3D. Um, we have a management team that's also very deep in the world of CPQ, which is uh, a lot of configuration technology. Um, we also have teams in Europe and the United States, we've raised $65 million in funding. So it's a team that you can trust to be here. And that's relatively important in a world where there's a lot of consolidations happening in the industry of visual configuration. Um, another thing I wanna hit on, if you are a leading global brand, is work with a vendor that has a modern commerce infrastructure. Um, a lot of brands today are working from Composable or uh, Headless, they're part of the Market Alliance. Um, you really want a vendor that's going to be API driven, which is 3Kit. Um, 3Kit is API driven. Um, and really consider it if a lot of different things, if you can't connect into those, those parts, important parts of your business via API with your vendor, you're going to have a lot of trouble there. Uh, I believe we're on the, uh, the sixth part here is, um, some vendors in the visual, some vendors in the visual configuration, uh, visual commerce space, um, have, uh, relatively difficult contract terms in the sense that you do not own your 3D assets. What we mean by that is you might pay a lot of money to you know, have that vendor as a, as a partner, and then if you decide to leave that vendor or do something different with your 3D assets, all of a sudden you don't own them and that can be a huge problem. Uh, finally, you really think about custom UI and UX. You want the UI and UX to reflect your brand and your product and uh, for some of the vendors, it's one standardized UI and UX for every single one of their customers. And if you have a special product, then you should have a special UI. But take these considerations in mind. Um, there's a really exciting world of visual commerce being built right now. And uh, you really want to make sure you make the right selection for the digital transformation of your business. Thanks.